chait he so clever as we about to end the liturgical year it talks about the end things it talks about being called to account for what we have done it talks about how prepared are we the end thing the eschaton what will happen at the end of time how prepared are you and this is what we hear in the gospel even in the previous uh, uh, parable it was about being prepared how prepared are you the ten virgins how prepared are you because there are certain things you cannot do in the last day. How have you used your abilities? How have you used your talents in the first three days? There is a suggestion that in our lives we should be as diligent and industrious as a loyal and faithful wife in the use of our God-given gifts and talents with the fear of the Lord. In the Jewish tradition, women were not so much considered. They were seen but not heard. And then they talk about this is perfect woman who is talked about at the city gates. She is not hindered by what she cannot do, but what she can do. She is perfect. Why? Because she is able to use what she has diligently and industrious. <laughs> And like the one talent man, she takes her gift and brings forth good, not evil. She reaches her hand to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. This is the woman who's been talked at talked about at the city gates. Our value is priceless, very rarely to be found. And as we talk about the poor today, she is an example. She uses what she has to help the poor and the needy. She plans well. She can make a budget in five hundred watcha for a month. <laughs> Don't make a budget for yourself when you, you receive pocket money for your month. <laughs> she knows the priorities. She knows the essentials. She calculates. This is the woman. She is not so much attracted by what other people do. Paying, much, paying so much about the external appearance, the cosmetic appearance. <laughs> she doesn't pay much to her. She's natural. <laughs> this is the woman. When you find that woman, you have found it rich. And it matches. <laughs> Brothers, even you, when you find this person, <laughs> you enter into a holy friendship, not a holy friendship. <laughs> she's the one who is talked about. She's the one who is talked about. She adds value to your life. She adds value. Not those who take advantage of you. 
This is the woman unlike the man who received a talent, one talent. She does good to all. And if we, we, we talk about the wisdom, we teach the problems, it's all about how to master life. How should I live? How should I master life? And we are told the fear of the Lord. She has that fear of the Lord. That's the bottom line. She does all this so that she can enter into a good relationship with others and she realizes what she has for the service of God and others. In the Gospel, the parable of the talents or the gifts or abilities talks of a business language. Some people said actually it was like silver or a kind of maybe copper which was worthy about a salary of 15 years. However, we see that when the master went, he gave this talent to the three people. The first five, the second two, and the third one. But our attention is so much on the useless servant. No doubt, the one who received the one talent stands out. And he stands for the scribes, the Pharisees, and their attitude to the law and the truth of God. This servant buried his talent in the ground in order that it might be handed it back to the master exactly as it was. The whole aim of the scribes and the Pharisees was to keep the law exactly as it was. In their own friends, they would sought to build a fence around the law. Any change, any development, any alteration, anything new was an attempt. It was excommunication. They desire to keep things as they were. That's what they desire most. To keep things as they were. Exactly. That's why they were condemned. Jesus tells us in the parable. There can be no religion without adventure. God can find no use for a shut mind as it was, the way it is. He never used this talent because sometimes you hear the expert of failures advising you, we have never done this before. It has never happened at any point adventure. In my so many years here, we have never done this. The experts in faith. <laughs> <laughs> they will discourage you. They don't want anything new. Maybe sometimes we can even say the case. Someone will say, I don't know where the case came from. They were given five, the other one two, and I was given one. I don't know the one who is against me. Use your talent. Use it. Don't compare yourself with others. Don't compare yourself with others. This parable tells us that God gives people different gifts. As I said, one five, one two, and one was given one. 
It is not a person whose talent which matters. It is not the person whose talent which matters. What matters is how he or she uses it. That's what matters. How have I used my talent? Some of you, you are gifted in singing. Some of you are gifted in cooking. Do you cook with passion? Do you sing with passion? Three years. That's in the moment. Not a single petition in the chat. <laughs> Three years in class. Never a single question. God and the community. 
it tells us that the man we will be punished is the man who never tries, is the one who is going to be punished. And then an encouragement is given to this one is given five, to this one two, to this one. It means I cannot possess all the talents. Where I am weak, the other one strengthens me. I cannot possess all the talents. But no one among us can say he has no talent. The one who is going to be punished is the one who never dies. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are challenged. Let us use our talents to the full. And the gifts which we have, let us use them at the service of the brothers and sisters. And then, let us work with compassion. With compassion. Compassion and passion. Passion. You see a brother working at the, flyer, at the flowers with passion. I have seen some of you. Uh, first year you were so quiet. Second year then I see, is there, is there. Then I say, eh? He was hiding his talent. Keep it up, brothers. You have. The way you love, no one can love like you. <laughs> so the gifts which we have, may we use it at the service. We cannot just, if I know how to play the piano or keyboard, I cannot just say, sit, and that it is going to work. If I know how to play chess, I will even forget who is the bishop and what is the pawn. I will forget. So, Use the talents which we have. Make sure you practice. And above all, in the second reading, Paul challenges us that. Let us be sober. The community was complaining. We don't we want to know when will be the second coming of Jesus Christ, the Pharisee. The day of the Lord. Give us the date and the hour. We don't know the day and the hour. If you know the day and the hour, <laughs> are you going to be here? Maybe you will come in the last minute. We don't know the day and the hour. What is important for us is to be sober, be awake, not sleeping. You have been sleeping for too long. Let us continue doing good. That's what St. Paul tells us. My dear brothers and sisters, let us continue doing good because we don't know the day and the hour. Maybe it is today or tomorrow.